Hi, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight here from our Aesthetic Immersion Studios here in sunny Southern California. Thanks for taking your evening and joining me for this, our first launch of our AI business webinar series, I guess. Um, this is something that, quite frankly, here at the Aesthetic Immersion, we've been talking about for a number of months, um, if not even over a year, where a lot of our, uh, I guess, commu our community within the Aesthetic Immersion asked for, hey, more financial guidance. Um, just to introduce a little bit about myself, my name is Enoch Kwok. I work here at the Aesthetic Immersion, uh, one of the initial people here as COO. Um, but my day job, my other job, is also CEO for Skin Perfect Medical. And so, you know, today we are going to be covering the business of aesthetics, right? And in my position uh, with this company, with Skin Perfect now for nearly 17 years, I have started, I've seen a lot. We, we grew from one location. Now with us, we have eight locations here in Southern California. We have, I have over 80 plus employees that I manage and I oversee. And, you know, revenue wise, we're, we're, def, we're above 10 million uh, annual recurring revenue. And we were there probably within the first 10 years of business. And so I only tell that just to hopefully be able to connect with you tonight and to just let you know that uh, I was there where many, where many of you have are currently in terms of starting a new business, right? Starting off very fresh, very new. The one difference though, I guess, between myself and most of you, I would imagine, um, are that I'm not a healthcare provider, right? I am not an injector. I actually am here solely for the, the purpose of running the business, the operational side, financial. Uh, I also help with uh, legal, with HR, with marketing. And so today we're gonna be covering a host, a host of all those topics. And really at the end, trying to talk and talk and showcase kind of what here we're gonna be offering at the Aesthetic Version for those that really are looking for some more business guidance, right? And so uh, we do have a Q&A. If you do have any questions, we're definitely going to try and get to it at the end of, at the end of tonight. Um, there's a Q&A box rather than using the chat feature. Um, if you could just make sure you type in all your questions and answers there, uh, questions there, um, my team here will be able to pull it up and I'll be able to read it uh, off my screen here and hopefully be able to even provide some more answers specifically to some questions uh, as we are kind of going through this presentation tonight, okay? Um, so without further ado, let's kind of get the presentation started and kind of pull up the slider. Hopefully you can kind of see the AI business. And so profitably during challenging times and clicking here and we're trying to see how that works here. But really what I'm looking at is that's me. I just talked a little about myself. So we'll kind of move to the next slide here. Um, I think this is kind of the first question. I'm always a big believer in mindset and really understanding why we're here, right? And what we're doing here in the aesthetic industry and aesthetic business. And I think this is a question that as I was kind of putting this presentation together and really understanding and trying to understand uh, more about you. And, you know, we found out, I sent a business survey out for, uh, to our list and we had about a, a several hundred responses there. Um, I think, by the way, for those that filled it out, Emily Fritz, if you're watching, uh, you did win that webinar, that free webinar, uh, 199 value. So we'll be emailing you for that. So thank you for watching, opening our emails and completing the survey for us. So Emily Fritz, thank you. But I think this one's a, a good question to start off with. Do you suffer from imposter syndrome? And I think the, the question here really is, are you a healthcare provider or are you a business owner? Um, I work, I'm able to work with some of the best in the industry with Dr. Gideon Kwok, uh, as well as Lori Robertson. And again, they're both very, very esteemed within the aesthetic industry, but early on in their journey, early on in their career, when they're transitioning from a healthcare provider to being a business owner with us here at Skin Perfect, there are some challenges, right? There's a mental leap. There is an understanding of, well, hey, I started off in the healthcare. I, I went to school, whether it's nursing school, whether it's physician assistant school, uh, got my advanced degree in being a nurse practitioner, and even in medical school, I was taught and trained on how to deal with patients. And that was my primary focus, right? Patient care. And, but now in, in aesthetics, if for those especially that have, are, have opened a new location or opened your own practice, or maybe even thinking about moving into your own space or, and, and, and starting your own practice, I think you need to start thinking about the idea of 
am I a healthcare provider or am I a business owner? And for me, again, as I said, I'm, I'm just a layman, right? I'm not a medical provider. I have not injected anybody. Uh, I am somebody that really was focused on the business and really thinking from the with a business cap. And so today's really kind of webinar and conversation really hopefully aligning with you today thinking and being a business owner. Or again, thinking, putting that cap on and focusing on the business side of aesthetics. And I think it's really pertinent now more than any time. Um, again, Skin Perfect Medical, we've been around for 19 years now here in Southern California. And we all saw this huge growth spurt coming out of COVID, right? At least here in the United States. And we experienced dramatic growth, double digit growth year on year. And this year though, and actually really started at the end of last year, where we started to notice a slowdown within our business, right? We started noticing a slowdown, less patient volume. We started noticing patients starting to spend less money. We started seeing a, a lot of our marketing not being as effective. Marketing costs were going up. Uh, other issues just internally, like HR and staffing, right? Where it became more and more difficult to hire qualified employees. People were leaving, they weren't staying. Just, I went through that, you know, I, and I think some of you are, are, are going through that right now as well too. And so today, hopefully, is kind of an understanding of hopefully at the end, you will be able to have the confidence to don that business owner cap, right? To wear that and wear it proudly and confidently to take you through what I believe will be a challenging year for the rest of this year and maybe even to 2024. And so hopefully today we'll cover some of the fundamentals in terms of where I think uh, I do specifically believe that you need to know the details, but also tactics and strategies that I myself am implementing with my own team. Okay. And so really um, what we have here from a, I'm trying to get this slide here going. There we go. Thank you. This is just again, a mindset question. How much time do you spend working in the business, working, working on the business? And I think this also is, is a telling question. If you are a, a sole provider in your practice and you have opened your practice up and it's just you, you're the front desk, you're the office manager, you're the inventory manager, you are all of that. And so I think the, the question is, you also then have to see patients too, right? When do you have time to then, if you're seeing patients all day, when do you have time to focus on the business? And I think this is the difference between working in the business and working on the business. Here at Skin Perfect, uh, we have a mix of our, 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 our partners and providers. They work both in the business and on the business, but ultimately we have a team here that works on the business 24 seven. That's what we do to really figure out how to grow, how to market, et cetera. And so just me sharing today a little bit more about where we're at, uh, hopefully kind of gets you in the mindset of here tonight, that you are going to be working on your business, right? And really thinking some of the strategies and mindset shifts. And so this is the first one here, the business owner mindset shift. I think the key thing to think about if you're a healthcare provider, your patients, right? That's the number one thing. That's what drives revenue. That's what brings in money. That's who you're caring for. That's why you're learning a lot about injection techniques and, and whatnot. You are here to treat your patients and that's right. But I think the mindset gap that a lot of people, a lot of new providers, don't, the new business owners that are providers need to also understand your patients are your assets. And an asset, when you think about what the word asset means in, in layman's term, it's just an income producing something, right? It's something that's going to help you make money. A lot of people think about more rental properties, right? Um, stocks, whatnot. Those are assets because they're producing income. Your business mindset shift here, number one, is patients are assets for you and for your business and start, start, start thinking about them like that. And again, I hope people don't misconstrue what I'm saying. P patients are people. We are, have to be empathetic for them. We have to care for them, right? We want to build relationships with them. But at the same time, when you don the business owner cap on, what you're doing is you have to look at them as an income producing asset. You need to figure out how to generate maximum revenue from them when they are in your practice right? Mindset shift one. And so mindset shift two, this controller here doesn't seem to be working very well, um, is that we are in the business of retail medicine. Okay. Medicine, of course, healthcare, 
you guys are all, a lot, are, a lot of you are probably working, maybe even you came from a hospital environment, maybe came from a traditional healthcare environment, maybe still are working part time, and we're in medicine. And in those environments, patients are coming in on their own, on their, on their own volition, basically because they have issues, right? They have health challenges, or they refer by a doctor or referred by an insurance company. In the aesthetic industry, that isn't the case, right? We have to play, we are in an industry here in the United States, especially and probably around the world is more of a cash-based incentive in cash-based business. There is no other medical business referring their patients over to you on their own volition, right? You have to be able to compete in the sense as a retailer where you have a shop you've opened, you open your own facility. How do you get traffic? How do you market your business as a, as a retail business, right? How do you get the attention? How do you get patients to, to call you, to email you, to find you, to search for you? Like those are all the strategies that we have implemented here with us at Skin Perfect that you also need to consider as well too. That people aren't just gonna come knocking to your door just because you're a great healthcare provider. Just because you're a great aesthetic provider, you might have the great skills, but if they don't know where to find you, they're gonna go find somebody else when they do a quick Google search, right? They're gonna go on social media and search for something and see a great photo and they're gonna to go to someone that is reaching out to them in that, on that platform in that way of which they're looking, looking to do their research, right? And so I think the key thing here is making sure that you have to understand you are in retail medicine and you have to apply the ideas that are relevant to running a retail business and we're gonna be going over some of that here tonight. So this is kind of the framework that I consider with most of everything I'm doing here. It's, it's basically um, the four P's framework, profit, product, process, and people, right? This is really what I, 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 I kind of design a lot of our, our business around focusing on these four things here. And the biggest one, the most important one here, uh, quite frankly, is, is which one? Some may think profit, right? This might be what you think, okay, yeah, as a business owner, I need to worry about that. Ultimately, when I'm here now in my position, 17 years later, running a group, hoping, working with a group of 80, almost 80 plus employees, this becomes the most important factor in my business right now. It's the people. This is where, where most of my time now, if to be very honest, this is where I spend my majority of time talking to people, planning, not only about planning a process, planning strategies and whatnot, but really then thinking about how that process then ties into people. How am I able to get, who do I need to get involved to make that a successful process? How do I get, how do I get involved to make it a marketing, hey, I wanna market to this group here. How do I get that done, right? Still working with people to get all that done. And ultimately, people also in this regard, in this framework also refers to patients too. Right, so people at the end of the day are the most important thing. This by far, for those that are looking to really build a long-term successful business, you really need to be able to master this part here, the people part, both patients and your team, okay? Profit, we're gonna cover a little bit about that tonight in terms of, yes, as a business owner, you need to be making profit. You need to be figuring out how you're making money and we're gonna be covering out how to, how to maybe do some basic math, show some calculations there and really calculating profit margins and, and understanding that concept there. Products, of course, this then refers to, um, this, the product here refers to our services that we offer, treatments we offer, what we're actually selling, um, and then the process, of course, is then how do you implement all of that stuff together to get the right people on board, selling the right product, so ultimately you can then make profit, right? That's kind of what we're, we're hoping to achieve in our business. And this, this is, again, the framework that I go about thinking about when I, when I start, when I walk into an office in a day. This is the four things that cross my mind. And what, what I'm doing to make profit? Do I need to talk about a product? Do I need to worry about a process and make it more refined? Or do I need to figure out the people I need to work with? And again, in my position at this current time, a lot of time it's really people. I'm really just working with a lot of people now. Uh, next slide. And so, you know, what we're going to be working on here is figuring out the financials. Let's start with the basic, financial intelligence 101. What is profit? How do I measure it? How profit are all those products that I'm selling? What are some KPIs that I should be paying attention to? Um, KPIs here, key performance indicators. For those that are unfamiliar with that term, it really is 
as it says, I, indicators for your business that we're tracking for performance, right? And they are the key ones, the more important ones. Quite frankly, in any business, there are probably thousands of indicators you could probably track amongst your business. The challenge becomes you only have so much time in the day, so you need to focus on the things that really are most impactful when you read that data point. Then does that data point give you information to make a better business decision, okay? Um, next slide. So what is profit? And I think this is a, 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 sim a, simple and a simple question, but there's a lot baked into this cake here. And it's a very simple formula. Again, bear with me today for those of you that are more on the art right-brained, artistic, creative side providers. This is something that we're going to be doing a little bit, of, not much math here, but really kind of working on the left brain here today. So profit at the end of the day is your revenue minus your expenses, right? And what we're looking at is really a lot of you probably in your business keep track of the revenue component, right? This is what you're looking at the most. You're like, hey, today I hit this daily sale. I hit $3,000 today, I hit $2,000 today, I hit $5,000 a day. And what you find when you think about this number here, this revenue, some people base their business off of that. You know, at the end of the day, what matters more than the revenue that you make is, right, is the profit here, right? It's what you end up, end up keeping at the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, because that's what you end up taking home. And that's what you end up using to do what you want to do with. So for example, you want to hire more staff, you need profit. You want to expand to new location, you need profit. You want to um, invest in new equipment, you need profit. This is what, the, what we're looking for, and that's why it's, it's a cornerstone in the framework. You need to be profitable in everything that you're doing. Or oh, at least, I'll say this, you need to attempt to be profitable in everything you're doing, or you need to be able to think about your business as a bigger picture, find out your larger profit centers, the ones that are making the most money, and the areas that maybe are more value added than not as profit oriented, but as a holistic picture, they provide a, a, a great, a better patient experience, right? And so most likely then the patient will stay with you for a year, two years, five years, and whatnot. So profit is the most important thing. These are kind of the three KPIs that I do track um, as a business owner, the gross profits, the product sold minus the cost of the product. If you go into like accounting speak, COGS right here, cost of goods sold, uh, essentially how this relates to you in the aesthetic world is if you sell a service, so let's say you sell Wrestle and Kiss uh, treatment for uh, $900, right? And you're doing lip treatment. The cost of that product, let's say costs $300. So we have the product sold is $900 and your product cost is $300. So your gross profit in this particular treatment is $600. So for that particular example, you are making $600 of gross profit, but you made $900. So you should be looking at this number and paying attention to that and not this number here at the 900 because this is what you actually take home to the bank. And even then, this is just a, met a gross profit of just the actual product cost being subtracted from what that revenue source, right? That doesn't even take into account all the other fixed expenses, right? Rent, um, utilities that you pay, insurance that you pay. And for those of you that are not in the, that aren't, aren't solo providers, you're staffing, right? That doesn't take into account. The next KPI that we're kind of talking about here is gross margin. This is really just gross profit as a percentage, really. It's just a representation of that. Um, essentially, you're just dividing, uh, dividing the gross profit divided by the actual revenue. And I'm gonna run through a scenario here in terms of the actual work, sh the actual sheet and the scenario that I have, that quite frankly, I use in, in my business. So I'll kind of be peer peeking behind the hood here on Skin Perfect and showing you where you're at. Net profit at the end of the day, this is the final, final number of what you end up do making minus the gross profit minus all your operating expenses as listed here, okay? Um, next slide. And so what we're talking about when we talk about figuring out how much money we're making, right? It really comes down to looking at your expenses. This is the biggest part that we all overlook sometimes where we're thinking, well, well, I just need to make more money. I just need to generate more revenue. I just need to sell more, right? I think that's not, it's not wrong, but in the time like we're at right now, 
when the top line revenue is, is slowing down that growth, you're not able to just chase growth. You can't just force it to come if the market is telling you, hey, uh, people are spending less money on average, right? Average ticket is down. Um, people, new, new customers, new patients are not looking as much because they are spending money on the necessity, the, the items that they need in their life, right? Necess daily necessities. And so they don't have as much disposable income anymore. So you can't just be looking at that revenue only without looking at your expenses. And so right now we're gonna be talking about expenses here. And these are basically the major categories of expenses. Um, they're of course, big, larger, smaller, smaller categories, but these are the main ones here that we'll be talking about a little bit today, okay? And I'm gonna kind of go over a brief budget here. For those of you who've never seen a budget, hopefully you guys have a budget that you guys are watching and, and, and looking at on a regular basis. Um, if you don't, I would encourage you to do so, um, that you need to figure out how to get that. You know, whether talking to your bookkeepers, accountants, whatnot, to get you a copy of that every either month or at least every quarter at a minimum. You know, annually, yes, you can, but 12 months from now, you might not know where all your money went in terms of looking at your expenses if you're not paying attention, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna load up my calendar here and I'm gonna show you something that kind of this is calculator that I actually use in a different format for my business here, okay? So bear with me here. And hopefully you guys can see this screen. And what this is, this is like a mini dashboard that I have that I kind of pulled together for this, for this purpose here. Ultimately, what we're trying to shoot for in our business is a, you can see this net profit margin here, this calculation here, this 15%. Our goal is to really try and get to this number here. We're really trying to get to 20% net profit, okay? And so that is the ultimate goal in the med spa space. Yes, can you go higher? Absolutely, it's great. If you're going higher than that, awesome. But this is kind of where you're trying to get to in terms of the numbers here. Oops, let me, let me edit this here. We're trying to get to 20%. You know, if you're running, if you're working in a cosmetic, surge, cosmetic practice with, with plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery, this net profit margin goes much higher. That, unfortunately, I'm not well versed in um, but as I said, our space, we are a full service medical spa. We do injections, but we also do a lot of laser treatments. We do body sculpting treatments such as cool sculpting, M sculpt. So we are a full service medical spa. And whenever I look at a budget, I'm trying to get to this number here, a 20% margin that gets me to be like, Hey, this is how much money at the end of the day, at the end of the year, this is what I can actually quote unquote pocket, right? And so just looking at a very overall budget, as in, this is a scenario here. We're looking at our revenue. We're looking at $100,000 a month, let's just say a month. So where expenses here add up to 80%. Again, we're trying to get to net profit 20. These are the categories here that we really want to focus on from our expense size in our budgeting, our payroll, our supplies, marketing, rent, utilities, equipment, lease, and miscellaneous and incentives. He, go viewing this here. You can kind of see all the different metrics. These are my recommendations in terms of how you break it down when you look at your budget, 35% payroll, 25% supplies, marketing, and whatnot. And so, you know, if you are, you know, supply costs are probably, especially in the United States here, right? We have probably one of the higher supply costs for all of our filler supplies, toxins, all of that. It's one of the highest in the world, I know, when we compare to outside the country. But you can imagine if you're at, you know, if you're selling a 30% cost, if, you're, if your retail price of what you're selling and your cost of goods sold is 30%, that hits your profit margin, right? You're only getting a 15% margin if your supply costs are 30%, which is why your goal is to really try and get this down to 25% if possible. Again, if you can get lower, that's great. If you can't, then you need to figure out which of, of, the, which of these other categories that you're gonna start tweaking. Well, how do I figure out payroll? Well, how do I get to this 20% goal? Well, if my payroll is at 35% and I know I need to get to 20, but my, but my supply cost, sorry, here is at 30% cost of what I'm selling it at, then I need to, in order to get to 20, to get to 20% net margin, I need to reduce my payroll cost by 5%, my expense by 5%. I mean, I did quite frankly in our business, went through a small round of layoffs the last few months to make my business lean. 
right? Knowing your expenses and knowing which categories you're, you're, you have in your, in your control allows you to keep this net margin higher. And again, my goal is to get there. At some point, there's a, there's a minimum of you, what you can cut. There's a maximum what you can cut where then you, at some point, you do need to figure out how you're pushing driving revenue growth, right? Again, this specific example, I'm really going into budgeting and talking about this here, okay? Really, again, these are some of the things that I've learned over the years to really, really focus on the expenses as really to make sure that you are maintaining profitability, right? And an idea I covered earlier in terms of talking about profit margins here, this is a calculator that I have here. And you know, this is a, a calculator that I will be sharing for those that end up part of our workshop where we are kind of calculating out our margins here. And this is just an example of, of, of Botox versus Dysport here. You can kind of see the Dysport cost 610, retail Botox of vial is $634 here. And this is the pricing depending on what you're selling at, right? 250 an area, maybe Botox $13 a unit, Dysport $6 a unit. Um, this is where I'm, I kind of put in a discount field here. Um, and so if, if you're not offering a discount, this is your full retail price. And when you go down, down below and you look at this gross margin, this is where that gross margin comes in effect as a percentage, right? And so essentially, when you think about gross margin, what you want to think about is you want that to be higher. I mean, the simple answer is you want it to be higher, right? And what that really translates to you as a provider in your treatment bed with your patient, if you are providing a service and selling a treatment that has a higher gross margin, that patient interaction, you are, and you will, you are making more profit per patient interaction. So for example, if, if you have a, a, a patient that comes in and spends $100 and your gross margin is 49% here versus a patient that comes in and spends $100 with you, but on that treatment, you're making a 59% margin, you are making more money on that 59% margin than you are with that 49% margin treatment, right? That's just how that works. And the reason percentages are great because you can actually, with financial, it's great to be able to move them back and forth between different calculations. Ultimately, in this particular example, Dysport wins Botox, again, in terms of this example here, as there's a higher gross margin. So just thinking about supplies and expenses, if you change out supplies, you can actually squeeze out more margin, right? And you can then make more money. Hopefully that, this kind of make, that makes sense here. The higher the margin, the more you get. What, you, what are your goals? What are you trying to target when you're selling a service? You really want to get to the high 60s, 65% and up is the gross margin target you want to do for all your treatments. Again, that's a goal. It doesn't mean you're gonna hit that every single time, but that's a goal. Right. This is this example here. I even put in the calculator here. What if I discount my service by 20%? What does that do to my margins? Well, I discounted the retail price here. And now look, if I discount by 20%, my gross margin dropped from 59% down to 49%. So I, I lost another 10% in discounting my pricing by 20%, right? So again, the calculator here is something I look at. This helps me figure out where I can price stuff at from our business but it also helps me think about, well, when I'm discounting something, right, if I'm offering value, how do I still try and get higher margins? Again, in a scenario where just discounting, you're not going to be able to. So then there's another concept of, well, you need to figure out how to either cross sell or upsell, right? That's a whole nother topic that we'll be covering at a, another time. But this is kind of the, the thought process here, if this makes sense, okay? And then just an idea, I mean, can't really have much, I'm gonna move on here. This is just an injectable, injectable thing. This is Galderma here. Um, this is just potentially a cost adjustment on the cost per syringe of these services. These are the price points that maybe the adjusted price is the retail price you're selling at, gross profit and gross margin. So if you can kind of see here, if, if, if at this product cost here, we're selling at 810 with a 10% discount. Let me, let me adjust this here to zero discount. And let me adjust this here also to a zero discount on the supplies. Oh, why did that go to zero? Let me. Okay, so adjusted price here, I set at $900 retail and the cost adjustment. So right now we're at a 55% gross margin here for KISS, right? But say I'm not discounting at 900. Well, let's say I'm able to get a deal 
on a supply and buy more, let's say, maybe at the end of the quarter. You know, buying strategies, I implement buying strategies with my business all the time. End of quarter, that's when all the salespeople come hit, hit, hitting you up for their sales. This is something that I do. It's like, well, can I get a 10% discount on my product costs? If I do, my margin, my margin goes up by, you know, almost 5%, right? Again, looking at this is something that, that you should be doing on it. Not, you don't need this every day. This is something that, but when you're bringing on a new product or a new service and you say, Hey, a supplier wants to come, I want to sell this product. Well, what's your product cost? Then I plug into the calculator here and then I can calculate my gross margin, right? So this is the idea of ultimately in a budgeting perspective, what we're trying to do is really trying to figure out how to, how to, um, how to maximize our revenue, decrease our expenses, and figure out what we're doing to maybe implement some strategies and tasks, implement some strategies and some tactics to actually reduce that there too. Okay, um, that's kind of the idea of the profitability side here. Um, hopefully, we'll be kind of as you load up the PowerPoint back again. Um, the next thing that we'll be covering in figuring out is. Uh, tying into the next slide here is marketing. Okay, transition to marketing now. One, kind of getting some things about, about, about profitability, right? Let's talk about marketing now, where that's the, one of the other key tenants of, our, of any business. Like, what are you doing to market? And come on, this, marketing here. Um, the next slide here is who are you marketing to? I think that's always a big component, thinking about your, your demographic, your age, your sex. Something that also gets considered in your socioeconomic status, you know, you need to be thinking about, are you targeting a luxury market? Are you targeting a middle class market? Are you in a town where your average income of, your, of, that, of that city is X amount of dollars? Well, then what is the market value for your service as well too, right? There's a lot of math that goes into it, but you need to be able to understand that as a business owner, right? To understand, well, hey, how do I price my stuff to make sure I'm profitable? Because I need to know my clients. I need to know my patients. Marketing allows that market research is bundled into marketing of learning about your end user, learning about your potential patients and seeing there. You need to market to, of course, as a strategic new patients, of course, right? You need to be able to figure out how to bring in new patients through advertising, potentially. Um, there's a lot of various forms that I won't be able to cover a lot of that tonight. I can touch over a few little things here and there. But ultimately, you need to figure out how to generate new patients through marketing. Uh, we obviously think instantly social media, but there's a lot of other things that you should also be considering as well, too, because I myself, again, with a practice now, uh, multi-million, you know, eight-figure business, I'm marketing in all platforms and all channels as best I can, with, even with my budgets. So I have larger budgets, but even still, it's not even enough sometimes to do what I really want to do. And then existing patients. That I think is one of the biggest things that we overlook at sometimes as, as, as business owners, really figuring out how we can drive traffic and drive business to our existing patients. Um, that is always one area where we always overlook because, hey, I need to drive more business. My patient volume is, is decreasing. Well, I just need to get new patients. And sometimes it's working with your existing patients to drive more revenue and not only drive more revenue, but to get that referral from them too, right? So this is kind of the marketing process as in a nutshell. Like I said, there's, only, there's so many details bundled into marketing. This is what my general census is in terms of a, a plan, marketing process. Create awareness. You need to create awareness of who you are in the marketplace. You need to figure out how to get your, create the attention to get in front of people's faces and get in their eyes, on their cell phones, on their mobile, on their mobile device like a tablet, in front of their computer, right? Then the next step in marketing is how do you connect? You need to be able to connect with them in some way, video, text, audio, how you, how you structure your videos, um, how you talk about your products, how do you talk about who you are, right? You need to be able to connect with them as a consumer to drive enough interest for them to want to actually reach out to you, right? Think about just you yourself as a consumer. When you go online, how many things, how, many, how much information are you absorbing on a, even just a 30 minute rabbit hole down an Instagram day, right? In your day, how much information are you processing in that one moment? You're competing against that as a business owner. You're competing against that attention. 
that's given by everything else in the marketplace. Not, not even considering just competing with our own industry, right? Some of you have med spas, five within the same street. Maybe you work out of one of those uh, uh, studios. You maybe have five med spas within that particular studio, right? So how do you connect with consumers to create that awareness to give them drive interest in you? And ultimately your marketing process has to, at the end of the day, you have to figure out the sales deal, sales process. You have to be able to close that deal, right? You have to be able to make that sale. This is kind of the ideas of, of marketing for me. It's a sales and marketing duality. Marketing is tied into sales. You have to figure out your marketing, but you also then have to figure out how to make sure your sales process is also just as good too. These are come direct marketing strategy here. Um, digital print event. Again, these are just to some to name a few. On the digital side, you have websites, social media, review sites. I bring that up because now more than ever, people are going online and social proofing, right? They're going to Google. They're going to looking for reviews. They're going to Yelp. They're looking for reviews. They're specifically those sites. But when you think about social media, people are reading the comments and reading those comments and seeing, hey, I went there. This is great. Or I'm happy with this provider. I got great results. That's social proofing too. You know, a comment field within a social media post is just as powerful as a five-star Google Maps review in some sense, right? There's a lot of things that go into digital marketing. Print marketing is still valid. It's still relevant. Brochures, flyers, right? Gift cards, thank you cards. That's something that we do here at Skin Perfect for new patients. We have thank you cards and we have our team write them for a lot of new patients as part of their, their monthly goals in order to get for them to get a bonus they need to be able to write their thank you cards to their patients. You know, there's a part of it where you also, you need to be able to communicate and touch people where, you know, they want to be communicated to. Digital is the easiest way, but for some people it's a very informal way and very impersonal way. How do you bridge the gap? You need to be able to bring in personal touches. Thank you cards for us is one of those promotional items in the print sense. Uh, we offer free gifts for new patients as part of kind of, again, the sales process. Do you have that? Once someone's booked an appointment with you, have you booked that? The event there, in-person events too. The next idea, uh, let's go back. Brand marketing strategy. This is where you need to find your USP. What is a USP? It's, it's a unique, sell, unique, sell, unique selling proposition. What makes you unique in the marketplace? And you need to develop that marketing plan that messages your USP. Again, this is what sets you apart from everybody else. This is who you are this is something that will make you different. If you're just another practice, business owner, marketing the same services, marketing to say, hey, we're doing this, we're doing, uh, we're doing lip injections, great. But five other people within your same community are offering, we do lip injections too. What makes you different? You need to identify what your USP is. What makes you special? And ultimately, brand marketing is really about also building your brand through your patient interactions. Building a brand is much more than a logo and colors. Uh, I used to think that. Some of you maybe think that too. I used to think that early on. It's like, hey, all I'm thinking about right now is my brand is my logo. I spent all this time, effort, energy, money to build a logo. I like the colors of it. It looks great, looks cute, looks fancy. It looks luxurious, it looks professional. But a brand is more than that. You know, a brand is actually when someone walks in to your facility, has an experience, and they leave with that a great experience that is part of your brand, right? Like for example, when you go into high-end luxury retail, again, bringing in the ideas of retail, high-end luxury retail, uh, like let's say Louis Vuitton or whatnot, you walk in the store, you buy something, you walk out, you're feeling like more than, you, you, even though you dropped several thousand dollars, you're feeling like a million bucks. And there's that brand that's like, hey, that brand now associated with me, it, now that it gave me this emotion of, hey, I feel so great about myself in buying something from there, that I want to go back there again and to feel that same way again. You need to be able to hopefully get to that point of, of building a brand that connects not just, again, on a visible level, but on an emotional level. For those of you that never built a brand Bible tip, you can go to fiverr.com. You can get one very cheap. Again, you start somewhere with just a logo, colors, and whatnot. That actually will be very helpful when you're working with marketing agencies or marketing people to say, hey, this is my logo. These are my assets. These are the colors I like and you're not repeating all day long, um, build a tip there. I mean, I spent, in Skin Perfect, I spent $15,000 to build a brand Bible and a marketing plan and all that. Okay, we talked about unique selling proposition there. Um, kind of move forward there, next slide. 
Um, the next thing here, in general too, you are taking your customer on a journey. This is what you're looking to do. And ultimately when you're building a brand, you're taking them on a longer journey too, right? And this is, again, this is part of that $15,000 marketing consulting package that we paid at Skin Perfect. I'm hopefully saving you guys a lot of money here, but I'm putting this value here because this is what I got out of it. And if you can look into the details here, this is the different phases of a consumer buying, right? There's a lot to it. You know, I don't have time to cover it today, but in those different stages of where a customer, potential customer is looking on the market and looking to where to decide on which provider I'm going to, these are all the things that we're doing at our business to figure out how to get, in, get their attention, right? To get that attention. Um, again, I have to, sorry, move forward here. Um, people, this, like I said earlier on, is your most important asset tying into patients. You need to understand what your patients want, right? I think that is also very important. Now we are going back into the healthcare provider cap. We are now starting to think about providing great healthcare, providing great aesthetic care, right? And so you need to make sure, if you're not doing this, make sure you have consultations, make sure you're developing treatment plans, make sure you're following up on that plan every visit. Every time they come in, maybe they have a budget, but you build out this plan that costs $5,000 but maybe they only have $1,200 to spend every time they come in. Well, that's where you hopefully want to build that relationship, right? You've built that plan. They've agreed to it. They've seen it from you. And now every visit, okay, they spend another $300. They spent another $400. Well, then let's review that plan and say, okay, we're here. Now let's revisit the plan we talked about. Okay, the next appointment, this is what I really want to do for you because I think you're going to really enjoy the results, you know, uh, and then you kind of maybe alert them on the budget. So then maybe they're aware the next time they come in, they need to be spending that kind of money, right? This is where I tied in earlier on marketing to existing patients. This is Congo, a version of marketing. This is the idea, the strategy, and the tactic tied in with it. Marketing, but it's also patient care, but it's also tied into patient retention. Again, a lot of things are layered into this too, but a very simple thing that you should be doing right now, if you're not. Um, next slide, please. Patient retention. The idea behind patient retention, really create more opportunities for touch points. Upselling, cross-selling, continual marketing outreach. These are the things that I would focus on when you're thinking about your existing patients and how to develop a marketing strategy behind it to really create more opportunities for touch points. So for example, here at a full service med spa, we have access to estheticians and facials. And that's something that arguably everyone should be doing on a monthly, if not bi-monthly basis, right? So sometimes, if they were to come in and purchase a package of, 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 of filler and services, you know what, hey, I, I appreciate you. Where are you getting your facials at? Oh, I'm getting a such and such down the lock. Well, you know what, let me give you a free one this time and you can try my esthetician, try our technology, why it's great, you want to espouse you know, the greatness of it. And then, like, great, I'm gonna come in and get another touch point with them. What you've done is a couple of things. You've done a cross sell, right? You've opened their opportunity to try somebody else. Hopefully your team also is on board, trained, gonna give them a great experience. Now they're revisiting. If you see on their schedule, they're coming again. Now you're able to greet them, say, hey, I saw you're on the schedule. I just wanted to pop in and say hi. Thanks for coming again. You know, I was reviewing your treatment plan, da, 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 right? This is the process that you're building in your mind. And hopefully then it, it, if you have a team, you're also sharing this with your team as well too, right? Um, patient retention, right now in my business, that's what I'm hugely heavily focused on with my team not so much on new patients. And again, I mean, not so much. It doesn't mean I'm not doing anything, but I've reduced my ad spend on the new patient side to put more money into patient retention. Um, and again, those are some strategies that I, I, I'm doing right now. Next slide, please. Uh, finally, staffing and HR. You know, you're here to build a company culture, right? And of performance and accountability. That's what I'm here to do for my business. Culture is a big word. And it kind of can be a nebulous word within the industry. What is culture? What am I trying to build as a company culture? You know, if you're just solo practice or you have a handful of employees, at the end of the day, you are that culture. You don't need a handbook. You don't need a presentation. You don't need that when you're small. When we started small, I didn't know what culture was. I kind of relate now culture really to creating one aspect of it, is creating a great work environment, right? But there are other layers to that too, so many more. But if you're a small practice, 
looking to grow, look, and you, you have aspirations to grow larger, you will need to at some point come to grips with the idea of building a strong company culture. You know, when is that inflection point? In my opinion, when you probably get to like four to five employees, six employees, that's when you need to start really thinking about that. I, myself at Skin Perfect, we have a, a culture manager. Her job solely is on customer service, customer experience, and figuring out how we can build a better culture for our team and our team members. That is her job, right? Because it's so critical, especially for some of you that experienced the same issues that I had this last year. Churn, high rates of turnover, you know, we, a lot of our workforce now, um, you know, different, you know, I have team members here too, so I don't wanna say anything in, in detail, but, you know, we have millennial workforce, we have Gen Z workforce. It's a different crowd now. It's, and that's also workforce coming out of COVID too. There are a lot of them were in, used to remote online work, you know, working from home. And how do you find that balance? I'm still working through it too. I don't have all the answers, but I'm, what I'm sharing is things that I'm, I'm going through myself and trying to focus and figuring out, trying to find solutions, right? You need to be able to figure that out. But when you're small, you are the culture. When you walk into your office and, you have your, and you're communicating with your front desk, hi, how are you? Good morning, great, thank you. That's culture right there. You're building a positive work environment, right? When you get larger, it becomes harder to scale that with just you because you don't have that interaction anymore. But what are the processes you need to train your team or yourself mentally to get there? Or even if you're small, what are some cultural things you should be doing, some concepts you know, that you should be doing working with your staff, right? Performance and accountability are the key things there of how I, I, I focus my culture on. Uh, next slide, please. And really develop team and individual goals. You want to be, have consistent, regular follow-up. You want to have recognition for work and you want to have accountability. That's the key thing here. Accountability for me, especially now more than ever, is, is the big aspect of, well, hey, I need you to do X amount of work. I've talked to you 50 times about it. Well, where's the accountability side? Are you slowly intensifying your conversations to the point where, hey, this person needs to know they're not, if they're not doing the work, there's gonna be some larger consequences, right? These are things that I've learned over the years on how to do better. I'm not perfect, and quite frankly, early on when I was much younger, and you have a staff, I don't know what to do, quite frankly. I mean, it's just you go, you start thinking about, well, this is how I would respond, but you start realizing that your response, especially nowadays, again, with the type of workforce that we're working with, the different gem generations, you have to be responding and conversing with them in different ways. They have different needs and different wants from your business, and just one size fits all, unfortunately, doesn't work anymore if you have an organization like myself with 80 plus employees. I can't talk to every 80 employee the same way I talk to, I can't talk to them all the same. You might have the ability to do so right now, but again, if you're thinking to grow and scale, even just adding an, an office manager, or even adding a front desk, right? If you're a solo provider, how do you go about doing that? You know, what are the meeting process? What are the conversations you should be having? These are things that I've learned over the years, but it's something that I'm trying to train my team. Is it perfect? No, are we perfect? No. But at least I have the confidence in knowing that these are the things that if I spend more time, effort, energy to talk to my team, we're gonna be able to kind of move forward with that and hopefully that they eventually will learn to be able to duplicate what we're doing and continue that culture of accountability and performance, right? So where do I start? Now that I'm getting to the last few minutes here today, again, I went through really quick on a lot of stuff, you know, just really to kind of give a sampling, a taste of what we're doing here in aesthetic business, right? This is something that is very passionate to us, especially to me, you know, here with Aesthetic Immersion, we're all about education and we really were focusing on injection education and training and we still are. But in this time, it just feels like we need something more. And so it's kind of our, our you know, to share our real world experience. I'm not a consultant, you know, I'm not somebody that goes out necessarily right now to advise other businesses. It's just something that I've learned just from real work, trial and error probably making more mistakes than actually making right choices, but making the right ones have made the biggest difference. But I've learned also from the bad ones. And so where do I start? I think that's always a question for you that are a solo provider. If you don't have any idea about your numbers, these are the numbers you should be tracking. Your profit margin, your revenue per hour, your fixed expenses per hour, and your monthly revenue, right? Fixed expenses, calculate all of the above, rent, 
some of the things we covered earlier in the, in the, in the meeting today, in the webinar today. Monthly revenue should be tracking that, you know, to the point of even daily sales, right? We track daily sales here. Uh, we even try and compare them year on year, month to month, year on year, quarter to quarter from last year. That helps us uh, provide projections on maybe what we're seeing, what we're doing. You know, if I can project growth or I project a decrease in revenue, well, hey, if, I'm, if my revenue is dropping by 10% and I see that trend happening, well, the first thing for me is I'm not, I can't really try and only focus on the revenue generation side. I need to start thinking about expense cutting, where I can cut expenses, right? As we as a kind of a, a sort of the, uh, the example earlier, you can't have one without the other. You can't know revenue and think about great growing without really understanding expenses and really managing that as a holistic view to get you to that profitable number, right? And you know, running a business is it's a long game. Some years you make 25%, 30%, some years you make 5%. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Some leads, some years you lose money because you're investing. You're just a brand new business but you need to have the confidence of where to start and what to start looking at, right? From a financial side. Uh, next slide, please. The next slide here is marketing KPIs. Know your monthly marketing expenses, know where you're spending money, pay digital marketing, uh, KPIs, ROAS, return on ad spend, cost per lead, very mumbo jumbo marketing if you're not doing any paid advertising, but that's how you really keep track of performance of your ads. Are you spending the money in the right place? Is it returning the money you need to spend? If you're spending $5,000, should you be generating $5,000 from it? Uh, or should you be generating $25,000 from that ad spend, right? That's your ROAS. What's that multiple should it look like? Social media, you know, what you should be looking at if you're heavy into social media, the impressions, engagements, channel growth, the number of followers, right? Um, and then even then, which channel are you on? Um, the click-through rate on, on different things. If you have, a, have you have an ad out, if you have a link tree within their profile of your Instagram page, how many people are clicking that? And ultimately, this ties into that third process of your marketing, right? You have to be ready to close that sale. That ties into your consults per month. How many consults have you booked on your schedule? And that tells you then your, your efficiency and your productivity for your, marketing, for your marketing that you're doing, right? Paying attention to that. It's just something that you need to be tracking these KPIs. Again, financial KPIs, marketing KPIs, you know, there's a lot of other details. Um, there's so much more uh, to it, but these are just some of the ones that I'd recommend if you're not even doing any of this to start here, okay? Next slide. And so when I wrap it back, bring it full circle from, you know, 50 minutes ago, do you suffer from imposter syndrome? Are you a healthcare provider or are you a business owner, right? We went through all of the business stuff. Hopefully now, you kind of have a little bit sampling of what you need to know to become a business owner versus just focusing on those things versus just focusing on, hey, I just need Botox education or disport education, more filler education. Sometimes your skill set might be great enough um, to, to, but you need to start focusing on your business, right? Are you working in your business? Or are you working on your business? And so uh, next slide here. The next question, the next part of this becomes the answer really is in order to have long-term success in aesthetic industry, you need to be both. That is just something that, quite frankly, from a mindset perspective, you need to recognize. And ultimately, even if you're aspiring to open your own practice, you need to also recognize that fact too. You need to be a healthcare provider and you need to be a business owner. Being a business owner though, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to know it all. What it does need to know, you may need to know one thing and as I said earlier in the four Ps, the biggest thing is you need to understand how to work with people. You need to be able to delegate, right? You need to build a team. You need to be able to let things go. Um, some of the business survey questions that we got are, hey, um, how do I stop being a perfectionist? And I think that's quite frankly for a lot of providers on, and you can recognize this too, and, and self-awareness. Are you one of those that's a perfectionist? Do you need to get things done the way certain way and that's why you're not willing to let go of some of these business things. You're not willing to let go of the marketing. You're not willing to let go of the financials. You want to be involved in everything. If you're a high functioning person, great. If you can work between your left brain and your right brain, awesome. But I, I sense there's a lot of people that aren't that way. They really are focusing on the aesthetic, the creative, what they really want to do, right? They left traditional healthcare to get into the space. They want to deal with happy patients. They want to have those great conversations. They want to see happy patients. They don't want to deal with the business, but you open the business. So what do you need to do to implement? How do you take control of your business? Well, you need to think about your strategy behind that. 
And that, quite frankly, is figuring out who's going to help you do that work and how do you delegate that work, right? Who can you do that? And if you don't have that budget, if you don't have that team now, but you want to get there, well, then how, does that, how do you budget properly for that? How do you make sure you're making enough money to start calculating to paying for those people that you need to help you do the work and grow the business? You know, for example, right? Quick example, provider, solo provider. You guys are doing all the work, more power to you. You guys just are rock stars. But you're seeing patients, you have marketing, you're, people are booking appointments. How do I make an appointment? I, I need to schedule them in, but you need to go jump to a patient. And maybe you miss a phone call, maybe you miss a text, you get a text, you reply back to them two days later, and they ghosted you now. You, there's a lost opportunity there, right? But if you had hired somebody, to pay them maybe $20 an hour, $25 an hour to answer that phone call or that text within a short period of time, they may have actually converted to a patient that paid you $2,000, right? So you trying to do it all yourself doesn't actually grow your business sometimes because you've lost the opportunity to grow in spreading out the, the tasks that need to get done. Again, business strategies, right? Thinking about that. How are you doing in your business? And so next slide, please. 2023 will be a challenging year within the aesthetic industry. I'm feeling it. Some of you maybe are too. This is the year that you really need to fortify yourself. You really need to understand your business. You really need to understand what's going on. You, you know, this is the first step here you know, for joining me today. Um, but for those that are looking for more information, right? for those that really feel like, hey, there's a lot of baked into here. I, you went through this stuff so quickly, I don't even understand half the words you're saying. You know, we are launching a business workshop. That's really really catered towards solo providers, aspiring business owners, current business owners that are in aesthetics. We're gonna be helping you to try and build a plan. Those prepared that have a plan of action will be able to have the confidence to push forward through during challenging times. Right now, revenue is down in some offices for us, but I'm confident in that we will be stronger coming out of this downward swing. I'm not saying we're not gonna have decreased revenue. I'm not saying we're gonna grow forever, but for me to understand my business and knowing that, hey, I can manage my expenses, I know exactly where my money's going out and my top line is decreasing, what do I need to pull the lever, where maybe what's some strategies I need to negotiate a better price point with my supplier, those are things I need to pay attention to. That's where this plan, this confidence, you're gonna come from having a plan, right? And I think that's where here at Second Merchant, we really want to kind of get you to that space. Uh, next slide, please. If you fail the plan, you're planning to fail. I mean, that's quite frankly, uh, it's true. If you're like, hey, I'm just gonna wing it, I'm just gonna go with the flow, that's a possibility. But ultimately, what you need to do is understand that you do need a plan. For those that I want to know how to get confidence in my business and understand what we're doing, launching tonight, AI Business Workshops. It's in the link in the chat there. Profitability, budgeting, marketing, patient, all the topics we came up here. And more importantly, we're gonna also at the end of it there's each of these workshops, um, there's going to be a link there. You can click it. They're $249 for each webinar. We are providing a bundle, uh, a special price bundle, especially now at this time. Um, if you can go, uh, where we're going to be a bundle here. Uh, next slide, please. Where we'll be talking and figuring out how we can build a plan together, right? For those that, hey, I, I need assistance and guidance for the entire package. This is going to be a virtual workshop where I'm going to be working with you. Worksheets that we're going to be developing, slideshows things that hopefully will then learn the tactics, learn the strategies, and then actually take action and build a few things that you can bring back to your practice or bring back to you right now in where you're at so you can then hopefully grow your practice, right? So we're gonna be building this plan together um, based off some of my experience. Again, this is real world stuff. This is something that I do day in, day out, things I've learned over the last 17 years of running a, a, a successful medical spa here within Southern California, a very highly competitive market here. Um, you know, uh, the next slide, please. This is basically the plan here. You know, it's a nine week to take control of your business, right? So it's today is the first day you're here now spending time on your business, really thinking about what you need to know, what you need to learn about profitability. These are the dates here. Again, it's on the website. You can take a look. We're spacing out every couple weeks between the mod, the live workshops that we'll be doing to pace things out. Um, and then we'll be having these plan actions, these action plans in between where we'll be sending you doc wor worksheets to kind of build a plan together and from some of the things you're learning during that live workshop, right? 
And at the end, if you buy the entire bundle of all four workshops, you're going to be get it into a live Q&A on June 29th for 90 minutes where I'm going to be answering more questions and talking about things business and maybe even talking about some of your specific issues there. Okay. Um, ultimately, what we also are doing um, between now and the end of the month, again, for those that are interested in really taking your business to another level and pulling up our, our website here. Again, this is in the link, 249 per workshop. But what we're doing now at this time is we actually are, for the price of two of these webinars, really, we actually are, all four of them, are gonna be priced at $597. For the price of less than one vial of Botox, one vial of Dysport, we're gonna be working together for nine weeks on building your business, right? It's $597, you get all four workshops here, um, and you get one additional 90 live Q&A Zoom call, and for those of you that really feel that you've gotten a lot of value from here at the Aesthetic Immersion, maybe you're part of our mentorship, maybe you don't know about that. We have a mentorship program that 200 videos plus covering all sorts of injection training by Dr. Kwok, Gideon Kwok, and Lori Robertson. If for those that purchase the entire bundle, that we're gonna be able to apply that $597 towards any of your yearly mentorship budgets, mentor mentorship bundles that we have too, the workshops. So we have two levels, a Founders Club and Aesthetic Insider. Again, you can go through our website and view some of that so that you're going to be able to get continued access to education all year round, not just on the business stuff. We will be doing more business tracks with our mentees as well, to people that are part of our mentorship group, as well as, again, to the general population. But with this special offer here at 597, we will then credit that amount towards your yearly budget. So now you're tied in on the business side, you get that but you also get access to, again, to 200 injection training videos, right? So it's all together. So it's almost like a, again, we're just very cognizant of the time. We really wanna make it affordable for, for even solo providers to be able to take a part of this program here too. Let me answer a few Q&A questions here while we're doing it. Um, I would say for that one question, is this track useful for an injector looking to start your own business in the next 12 months? Absolutely. You will be ahead of the game because you're gonna be able to know from your expense, potentially like, right, you need to go find a rent, right? You need to go lease an office somewhere. What should that look like as a budget? Well, within my calculator here, you should be looking roughly about 6% of your overall gross, expected gross revenue. So if you're looking to 100,000 a month in business, your monthly rent should really be about $6,000 a month. You shouldn't be looking for $10,000 a month or $15,000 a month lease if all you're expecting is to build a million dollar business, right? It's about future potential, future growth, but also be realistic of what you can afford within your budget. And we're gonna be working, that will be some of the things we'll be working on within the budget too. And yes, the calculators that I showed here, that will be part of the program. We'll be giving you access to that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to work on it to make it even more robust yeah, and to be able to answer, you can input maybe more of your products that you use. You know, These were just the Galderma products, Allergan products, uh, other various vendors getting their retail pricing, and then you can calculate your own profit margins and to then know, hey, I'm selling it for this price. This is my supply cost. This is then what I'm actually making on it. If I were to discount it 20%, how much am I actually making, right? Um, some questions here. Would you recommend investing in a marketing company the first year of business? You know, I think this is the challenge here. There's so many marketing agencies. I've worked myself now with roughly 10 agencies over the last 17 years. We've probably, I spent, Right now, my marketing budget on a monthly basis is anywhere from 80,000, some months is $100,000 a month. I'm spending in paid advertising. There's no way I could do it myself. There's no way my marketing team could do that with that to level of sophistication that's needed. So in my opinion, yes, if you're looking to grow and pay your money, uh, pay marketing and pay in the, in the advertising game, I would recommend an agency. Have I found the perfect one? No but I can maybe give you some tips during, this, during the business talk about how to find the right agency, what are things you should be discussing with them, what are some goals you should be setting for them, how to monitor them, hold their, held them accountable, and if they're not working out, well, you need to move on to a new agency. I mean, that's just clear cut, and that's what I've done over the years too. Um, you know, how do I business is ready to introduce a new service or technology to my practice? That, for me, comes down to a revenue, gener revenue concept. Are you making enough money, one, to pay that equipment cost. Two, how much revenue do you generate from, will you generate from bringing on that new service? The reality is, don't ever listen to your 
equipment salespeople as to how much money you will make on that technology. We've made that mistake a couple times over the years. We have large, expensive paperweights sitting in corners of our office. You need to be able to find the right technology for the right timing, but there's a method to the madness to not just bringing something on saying, hey, I can sell it. What's your plan to sell it? Do you have a marketing plan to pre-market it to your team, to your, your patients? Do you, are you putting in events behind it? Are you going to launch it on social media other than, other than like that? Um, you know, the calculators themselves are, will be on a Google Sheet. We'll be running through the workshop. That's why it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be this style here. I'm going to be working from, you know, from, ask, from remote places. We'll be working on the workshops. I'm going to show you actually how to use those formulas, use those sheets, and plug in the numbers there um, and make sure that you can use it. Um, you know, people that have done paid advertising, Facebook campaigns, this is the biggest challenge if paid advertising is the leads, right? We get a bunch of leads, we get a bunch of emails, we get a bunch of phone numbers, but no one converts. I've been, I've been there, I'm still in there, but I have strategies I've implemented to try and squeeze out more of the conversion, right? It's part of the lead nurturing, it's part of the strategy we have to take into place, and that will also be covered within our marketing workshop there too. Um, scrolling down, um, Google Ads, yes, Google Ads I still think is a very viable option. It's really based off the intent, the intent of the actual user. If you think about, again, you're trying to connect with consumers, right? They're going, where are they going to search if they want to find a provider? They're going to a lot of places now. It used to be Google only, but social media has definitely taken the lead on, in some aspects. But when you think about the user in, in the environment of they're at their house, they're in front of their computer, and they're on social media, they're searching, they're searching, they're seeing through your feed, seeing through 30 other people, and then now they go on Google and they're searching cool sculpting or lip injection in my, in my area near me. They now have an intent, a buying intent, to look for something there. And so the difference between a social media thing, a, a conversion, and a Google conversion is that Google users are more intentful on actually getting to that last stage of closing and purchasing that treatment, of finding a provider. You know, for us at SkinPerfect, we do everything. We do Instagram ads, we do TikTok ads, we do Facebook ads, we do Google ads. We do it all because it's all part of the actual customer journey itself. Um, we're out of time. <laughs> um, this will be recorded for those that want to rewatch it. Hopefully we'll have it up within, certain, within very quickly. Um, again, please check out the link here on the website, on the chat. If you're really interested in taking control of your business, this is the year to do so. I've told, I'm telling my team right now, this will be a challenging year. I told my team, quite frankly, at, at last year, what strategy we need to implement for our business. It wasn't so much about grow, you know, growing massively. It was about retention and referrals, focusing every conversation with my managers and from their managers to our team. Everything needs to be tied about referrals and, and retention, right? This year, the same thing too. 2023 will also be a challenging year. We need to figure out new strategies. I myself am thinking about new things all the time. I'm still learning myself. You know, even though I've, I'm here sharing information with you, I'm still learning and, and signing up for courses and, and, and learning from other people. Not necessarily maybe only within our aesthetic industry, but other people that have done it. I'm learning from people that I can even glean off one strategy. You know, just a thought, if I were to learn one thing that I was able to sell another syringe of filler to a patient that pays for this entire course, right? Ultimately, you know, that's kind of how I see education. If I can learn and if I can apply one tactic and bring it back to my business, I can scale it up from my, my spending a thousand dollars or $2,000, whatever it is. If I can spend it across scale for me at skin perfect and generate 20, 30,000, 40,000 extra additional revenue from that one tactic, it's, it's worth it. It's been worth it. Right? And so ultimately, this is the time to take hold of your business. Right now, if you don't have that confidence after taking this workshop, I hope you will have more confidence in understanding more about what you need to do to run your successful aesthetic practice during challenging times. All right. Uh, again, thank you for joining me today. Uh, look out for more of our AI, AI Live, where we talk about, uh, again, creativity and the injection side of wellness. And we will be launching more AI business stuff. But this is the first foray timely right now uh, workshop that we'll be launching very soon. So thank you and have a good night.